In this video, I'll be covering how to design your Wisconsin EDMR for wastewater reporting. Uh, what we do is we need to fill out an XML file that we download from the state and then re-upload that to the state. So we got to get data from the WIMS database into these XML files. So we do that through designing a report. So go to Design, Spread Reports, come up with the familiar Spread Report Designer. I'm going to go to Locate. EDMR link and down here at the bottom is Wisconsin EDMR so this is for the wastewater EDMR. Go ahead and click it and the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to load up the definition file that you've previously downloaded from the state's website. So I'm going to go ahead and click load and it comes up and it has uh, some Wisconsin files that I've downloaded here. I've got uh, Wisconsin 1 for two, this is the file for January of 2008. I'm going to go ahead and open it. When I open it, it loads up. These are the requirements. These are the 11 things that I need to add to this report. The first one is effluent BOD. And if I make this file, this form larger, I can see that there's more information out here. And what's nice about this is I can go to effluent BOD and it kind of tells me what I need to report. So if I look here, it tells me that I can't uncheck laboratory cert certification number because it knows I have to report the lab ID because that comes in the definition file. So if I clicked on like flow, let's say, now notice you can uncheck it, you can report it if you want to if you had a laboratory for your flow, but so by clicking through here it kind of tells you what you're going to need to report. So if I click on a monthly, notice it now checks, oh, this is only required one value per month, so we're going to locate only one. So it checks it. As you click through these, it will help you figure out what you need to report. So right here, I'm going to start at the top. The first step is to link a variable to it. So which variable do I want to pump into Effluent BOD? So I'm going to click the three dots to browse. I'm already on my Effluent location, and I've got BOD right here. Double click on it to bring it in and on the first column I'm going to locate the date. Also BOD can contain a qualifier so I'm going to check that box. In this case I don't need to report the limit of detection and limit of quantification because the file specifies that I don't need to N and N here. I go ahead and click OK. Oh and it tells me I forgot to fill in my lab certification number. So my number is two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's say, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And it puts it in there and it moves me over. Now, so what it did was it locates the data that I need. So right here, you'll see it just uses a normal spread formula. To get the qualifier, it uses the variable qualifier function. So I could come in here and edit these equations if I needed to. Changing, you know, if I had a variable, let's say a text variable for the lab ID because I used two variables, instead of doing just the text, I could come in here and relocate the data. What's important is I don't get rid of these red dots because those are the actual maps to the XML file so we know where to put stuff. So these are directives for another part of the program when we go to output this report. It tells us where to put the data in the file. So to continue, I'm going to go in here and do uh, locate again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the repeat command here, this little green uh, U arrow here. So I don't have to go find it on the menu. And now I can go back to the left. And I've got to do effluent TSS. There's no qualifiers here. I go to Effluent TSS. I've already got the date, so I'm going to say locate the date is in column A. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to repeat command again. Effluent Phosphorus, and you kind of get the idea now. Click OK again. Repeat command. Now I'm going to go to ammonia. And notice when I do that, it checks these boxes and says they're now required. 
So with ammonia, I do have a measurement, I do have a qualifier, but now I've got to report my limit of detection. And let's say it's 0.5, and I type it in, and it automatically calculates the limit of detection of 1.65. So in this one, I've got to do a couple more things. So I go ahead, fill them out, click OK, and it's going to populate those fields for me. Now I'm going to go do one more because we don't need to map every one of these for purposes of the demo. I'm going to go to effluent chloride and notice it now says you've got to do locate one summary value. You have to do the qualifier because the variable has it, so forth and so on. In this case, I'm not going to report the limit of detection. I can clear these out, but since it's not checked, it's not going to put it on the report. I go ahead and click OK and it will do that for me. Now. I want to check out the data for this report. I am going to report this data for January of 2008. So I go back to 2008 and it pulls up all the data. It looks pretty good. So I can review the data right here in this report. When I'm done or when I'm ready to output it, I click Save and I call it my Wisconsin EDMR and I'll put it in my regulatory report groups click OK, exit out of there, and now I'm going to go to Output Reports. I have a shortcut for it on my dashboard. It pulls up. I go to Regulatory Reports. I see Wisconsin EDMR, and I choose to output it as an EDMR or electronic report file. I want to output for January of 2008, so I go back to January of 2008. That is the file that I've downloaded. Each file is specific for a month, okay? So I go ahead and click OK, click OK, and what it will do is it'll ask me, okay, where's which source file do you want to download from? I go ahead and I click the three dots here, and I'm going to choose uh, Wisconsin uh, January 2008 and click open and here I will say I'll put the data to OpsSQL so I've got to change this. This can be set in your preferences in this case I'm going to change it so I can find it when we're done go ahead and click proceed it'll generate the file and I can view that file directly or I can open the file location. In this case I'm going to open the file location and here I have the EMDMR that has been generated and here is the file filled out. So with a XML file you can collapse part of it by clicking on the minuses. So I can go down here And if I scroll through, it says some of the stuff. And here we go. Here's the monitoring data. And it says we got to report the BOD. Remember, the lab ID was required, but the limit of detection and the limit of quantification were not. So that's where we read that from. And if you come down here a little bit further, it will start to show the actual dates and populate the values from the database. So this is WIMS went through and typed in the 15, put in our lab ID number for the proper date for 2008. I can close this file. I'm sure, I'll close all tabs. Go back into WIMS. And now I can go to February of 2008 click on that same report so in the next month when I come back I don't have to remap it out at all I have this definition I'm gonna to go to EDMR I'm gonna click OK and this time I browse to the file for February click OK change my output folder again and click proceed and it'll generate the file for February so once you've built a map for the XML data that's required or for the data that's required, you can simply then just go to report pack, output it every month after you've downloaded the file that needs to be filled in from the state.